Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. I'm Bill Horan, along with my co-host, Nassau Community College student, Mike DeMarco. Bill, today we're going to learn about an organization that helps to provide prevention and wellness education with access to affordable healthy food and a socially engaging environment that builds healthy lives. That sounds like a big project. Let's learn more from the Harmony Cafe with our guest, Rosemary McCarthy, their founder and president, and Mary Ellen Grimes, who's on their advisory board and their feast program instructor. Rosemary and Mary Ellen, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. Hello. Tell us, how did the Harmony Cafe get started and tell us what that's all about. Well, um, my name is Rosemary McCarthy. I am the founder of Harmony Cafe. Um, a few years ago, I guess back in 2015, I read about a uh, community cafes uh, all over the country. There are pay what you can, pay it forward uh, cafes where they would have uh, healthy meals based upon a suggested donation. And people would come to these uh, cafes and give what they can. If they were in need or if they wanted to pay it forward, they would come in also to uh, have uh, enjoy a meal. Uh, so I read about it and I said, oh, these are wonderful cafes. I really would love to uh, volunteer at one. Uh, so I searched around, uh, did my research, and I found out that uh, Long Island uh, does not have a community cafe model like this. Uh, so I, you know, I decided after a lot of research and I decided maybe uh, I was meant to create this community cafe on Long Island. Um, so that's how it started. I started out not really knowing much about uh, how to start a nonprofit. So it took quite a while to get it off the ground. Uh, and I did create the nonprofit called Harmony Cafe in 2015. And uh, in 2016, we started serving the community but not as I envisioned as having a, a brick and mortar cafe. Well, we started out as, as the, at the BFW Hall. We started having events at the BFW Hall. We created, a, simulated it just like a cafe, a pay what you can, uh, live music, um, two, two and a half hour events. Uh, we were doing them uh, for quite a bit of years, since 2016 all the way to till the COVID hit. Well, that's what we, how we started uh, the cafe. Uh, you know, it's not exactly uh, the vision of having a brick and mortar, but we have served the community uh, through the VFW Hall. And uh, Rosemary, as you've taught me, this is not a cafe the way we would think of it, where you'd go in for a cheeseburger or a sandwich or a plate of pasta. This is to help people in food need and to learn about good nutrition. Well, it is that. It is. The model is uh, it would be look like any other cafe that you would frequent, but it's also for people that are in need and for people that can afford to have a meal there. So what it is, is that it's like giving back to the community. It's a pay what you can pay it forward so if someone comes in that that's in need of a meal they will receive a meal if they even if they don't have the uh, money to give a donation and then someone else will come in that you know may ha that has the, the money to pay for the meal will pay also so they, they may even give an extra amount to pay for the person that isn't able to afford it that's what the model looks like it's for all people to come together it's a community cafe it's a very uh, social um, uh, 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 nonprofit where it has a lot to do with where everyone comes together. It's not separate where people that are just in need come. It's not like a soup kitchen. It, it would look like a regular um, cafe uh, once the model is up and running and once we are able to uh, raise the funds needed to have that. But when we had it at the VFW Hall, it we had all people coming together. We had people that uh, were in need, and we also had people that had full-time jobs. We had people f all over the spectrum. Uh, all It was a very diverse group that came together. So that's really what the model looks like. Um, there's no separation. 
So tell us a little bit about your backgrounds so, uh, and how that allowed you tra- to transition into uh, getting started with the Harmony Cafe. Well, I years ago, I did work for a uh, nonprofit. Um, I'm paralegal. Um, I, you know, I have a degree in paralegal studies, and I worked at um, a, co- a Suffolk uh, court, a uh, family court. I worked as a paralegal in there, and I helped quite a bit of people uh, uh, in that arena. Uh, but that was all I had training I had was uh, that nonprofit training was working for a nonprofit, but it's totally different than actually running a nonprofit and all the aspects of it. It took me quite a, you know, and I'm still learning you because you're always learning, um, you know, many years to learn how to run a cap, uh, run a uh, nonprofit, what you need to do. Uh, there's a lot. Oh, uh, you have to run a board. You have to have a board of directors. You have to have volunteers. I mean, it's quite a bit, uh, Involved, so I studied and I met with a lot of other nonprofits. I met, I've networked out to so Long Island. A lot of people do know me because uh, that's how I learned from other nonprofits and meeting with them, and uh, you know, little by little, uh, learning how to to do this correctly. So, Mike, that's called um, real world experience, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, that's that's for sure, and I think that's really the best way to learn because you know you could read and read Definitely. all you want. Um, you have to be in the in in there and, and doing it, meeting other leaders and, and uh, practicing because that's really kind of what the BFW Hall was for us. It was really a practice run, even though it lasted quite a long time, four years. But we learned a lot in that time frame, uh, how to actually run a, uh, a meal events and run a cafe because there was a full kitchen in there, commu- uh, a commercial kitchen. We had a big uh, space. So it was just as you would have a cafe. Mary Ellen, great. I'm sorry, Mary Ellen, can you tell us how the Harmony Cafe uh, works with the community and serves the community? Sure. A little bit about my background. I'm a registered dietitian um, and I've worked in the community um, for a number of years working for a food bank. Um, And my job was to go out into the community, um, provide nutrition education. I would do little uh, food demos, which is kind of what we do in the feast program in underserved communities. So we know on Long Island, there is we have a great amount of wealth, but we also have pockets of, um, you know, economic inequality and uh, food insecurity on Long Island. So I would go to uh, food pantries, soup kitchens, and just different areas and provide the nutrition education um, that is needed. So that's when I was working at the food bank, Rosemary came in and we started talking and then we kept a little bit in touch. And then, um, you know, when COVID hit and I decided it was time to really get back into doing some volunteer work. And I really wanted to help out with that because I knew we all knew um, we saw all the statistics when COVID hit, how it really impacted people on Long Island. Um, people who used to donate to food banks were now in line for food. So I saw that um, this was, well, you know, a, a lot of um, economic inequality and uh, just a need. So, um, you know, was really happy Rosemary found the feast program when we were able to um, adapt it for our needs here on Long Island. So would you say that maybe the pandemic acted almost as a catalyst in giving the Harmony Cafe sort of a, the way it operates a little jump start? I Well, for me, I don't know if Rosemary wants to answer that, but I, I just felt certainly COVID was a catalyst for many things. And we know how you know many people were affected and many people were not affected. But I think, I think it made us all sit back and kind of... Um, kind of really look at things again and see how um, things are different. Things changed here. I, I, I really do think they have. And I think um, it kind of was a catalyst to get us going to teach this program, which was needed anyway. But I think just COVID kind of highlighted things for, yeah. for it. Yeah. COVID uh, put a spotlight on these issues that we've already had problems with uh, food insecurity. Um, that's always been a, been uh you know it hasn't been resolved it just really put a, a spotlight on because everybody remembers the pictures of seeing people waiting on long f- uh, lines on like oh my god and then you know people like mary ellen said that didn't need help before needed it 
really, really needed it bad. So, um, yeah, I put a spotlight on us because we also turned and uh, changed our model. We had to stop our meal events uh, and then we went into uh, emergency foods and we did we had food drives. We gave out a lot of food uh, on Saturdays, almost every Saturday we've given out food. But it also brings the community together because a lot of people donated to us. We were at, we set up at the BFW Hall and we uh, we had so many people come down because people wanted, they didn't know how to help. But when they saw they could help local people in their own town and and really make a difference, we received quite a bit of help. Uh, and uh, we met a lot of people in the neighborhoods that just really wanted to give back and help their neighbors. So it really did put a spotlight on the issue and also bring it to light to other people that may have not known about how serious the issues have been on Long Island um, with food insecurity. And this feast program is wonderful because it really does help um, people uh, get control of their health. um, And it's a social too, because it's like a support group. And we also give uh, people uh, healthy food. Every week they get a uh, scholarship and we uh, give them, uh, we go over recipes and give them the ingredients to make them at home. So it's really hands on. It's a social type of a program and people do feel that um, they're being heard and they're being helped. Um, We do have it online now because of COVID, the numbers were outrageous, Uh, but now we're going back to uh, in person. I think this program works better in person. It's a 12 week program. But it works better because people uh, create a bond with each other. In small classes, only 12 people per class. And um, it's just something that really helps people connect with other people and get um, learn how to eat healthy. Um, and we, we show them that. Mary Ellen is a, a great uh, teacher. And um, really, people relate to her because she has a, quite a bit of experience uh, in the field. It's it's, so, um, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we look back on COVID now and I mean, as, as as stressful as it was, but, you know, now that we're all reflecting on it, everything sort of had its own little silver lining. So it's, you know, while yeah. uh, certain things had some difficulties, you're able to sort of start anew with a few other things. But uh, before we continue, yeah. I just want to add that you are listening to My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Mike DeMarco along with Bill Horan and today we are talking about the Harmony Cafe, an organization that helps to provide prevention and wellness education with access to affordable healthy food in a socially engaging environment that builds healthy lives. Our guests are Rosemary McCarthy, their founder and president and Mary Ellen Grimes, who is their advi- who is on their advisory board and their feast program instructor. Bill, first of all, ladies, I want to say on behalf of everybody here at the school and the station, thank you for what you're doing. Just listening to this, I think it's so uh, telling about Long Island, and we have heard before that, as you said, people who were donating two years ago were during the pandemic driving up to get food. And that's almost shocking. And they're living in nice areas, driving late model cars, and yet cannot afford the food or do not have food security. And thank God for people like yourself, whether you help one person, 10,000, whatever. And for most of us who are not involved in that on a daily basis, we'll ask you later in the show how we can either contribute or help in some way. Uh, You're the experts on it. You're going to tell us. But uh, on behalf of everybody, thank you for what you're doing. We really mean that uh, you're saving a lot of lives and doing a wonderful job. Now, Mary Ellen, I... I know you're involved in an online version of something called the Feast Program, and I thought that was a big dinner. Before the show, I was asking you and and saying, oh, everybody sits around the table, and I thought that's what my version of a feast was, but you corrected me. So tell our audience what that is and how that works. Okay, so the Feast Program uh, started in California, and I believe right now we're the only ones um, teaching it in New York. So it's kind of launching... Um, in a lot of different areas. So the FEAST program, so FEAST stands for Food Education Access Support Together. So the philosophy of the FEAST program is to eat 
um, more whole foods, plant foods, and less processed foods. So this program, we have some really great um, nutrition education piece of it where we just finished up on food labels, a couple of weeks talking about how to read a food label, how to translate grams of sugar into teaspoons of sugar, and just looking at all the different processed names on a label. Do we need to have that? Should we have more than five ingredients in our food um, when we're looking at a food label? Um, the other piece of it is the support group. We It's a circle format when we are together um, and people share how they did the last week or they talk about their challenges and we kind of support each other. Um, we do also have a, um, a topic that we talk about weekly. Um, we have a nutrition piece of it where we do a little food demo. So we're plant-based. We're not really using any meat. Um, so it's, you know, talking about whole foods, healthy foods, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, the amount of fiber in our diet. Because really what we want to talk about is what we need to include in our diet, not what we need to take out. People know we shouldn't be eating a lot of processed foods. So this, the more you eat um, these whole grain, wholesome foods, um, it's going to kind of crowd out the other stuff that we should not be eating. And then so we have that um, nutrition piece where we actually demo a recipe and then people taste it. And then, as Rose had mentioned, we have the scholarship portion. We provide the ingredients for that recipe. So we make that connection so that people or can take the ingredients home and, and uh, create that recipe. Um, we actually had it, um, even though we're doing it online, we had students this past week, we talked about um, veggie burgers, black bean burgers, and a lot of them made it and sent pictures. And they did this wonderful job and it was, it was really good. So again, the, the, the philosophy is eating more plant-based, eating whole foods, um, education piece, support piece. Um, the program can run for 16 weeks. We're choosing to shorten it, especially for the online model. It's just hard really to grasp um, everyone and connect with them the way you can connect when you see them together, um, especially when you're doing a food demo. Um, you know, we kind of show a little video, we talk about the recipe, but actually to be there to make it, to taste it, and then get in the ingredients, you're making that connection with people how, um, okay, so this is the ingredients, this is what I can do. Um, and I, so it's, it's a great program. And again, we're, we are, um, waiting to, you know, we want to have more teachers involved. We want to put it out there more in the community. We're going to put it, uh, advertise it hopefully in food pantries and other areas where people can come and access the food and get the nutrition education that is so important. Melon Rose, while we're talking about this, it's, I will give you an opportunity to have a little commercial. If there's people out there, are there any type of um, volunteers you're looking for, whether college students, high school, nurses, um, dietitians, yes. maybe lawyers mm -hmm. or, or professions we don't even think of, uh, would right. there be anybody you're especially looking for that could help? in this regard? Uh, yes, we're definitely looking for volunteers. Uh, we want to start expanding this program. Um, if you wanted to uh, be a feast instructor, you don't necessarily have to have a, a degree in health. Uh, you may just be interested in, you know, helping people in that field. We do have training. Our training's coming up in April. It runs for three days. And it's actually uh, online. It's out of the Calif because feast come This feast program is actually was created from a nonprofit from California. Uh, we bring in here and we're trained and licensed to teach it here on Long Island. If someone wants uh, to get so, in touch with you, is there a website or a phone number? Where are you yes, based, first uh, of all? They can go to uh, www.harmonycafeli.org. That's our website. And there are other, uh, you know, volunteer positions open. Uh, in, you know, even uh, some people that want to, we're going to be, creating uh, the meal events again, hopefully in May. So we're going to need uh, people that are interested in uh, working in a kitchen, helping in a kitchen, uh, uh, chefs, uh, servers. And so we're going to have quite a bit of things opening soon. I would say for any college open. student or high school student, that certainly looks great on a resume. Not only are you doing well for the world, but you're getting real world experience. You're learning and they're getting to work with nice people like yourselves who are really doing good and helping people. So... 
I'll turn it back to Mike. (laughs) Well, before we continue, I just want to add once again that you are listening to My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Mike DeMarco, along with Bill Horan. And today we are talking about the Harmony Cafe, an organization that helps to provide prevention and wellness education with access to affordable, healthy food in a socially engaging environment that builds healthy lives. Our guests are Rosemary McCarthy and their family. Founder and president, and Mary Ellen Grimes, who is on their advisory board and is their feast program instructor. Now, I understand that you actually also have a partnership with uh, Long Island Careers. Is it possible you can tell us more about how that started? Oh, Long Island Cares. Uh, I'm sorry, Long uh, Island Cares. That's okay. That's a good name, though, Long Island Careers. <laughs> <laughs> I would just created something that could else. Be a, <laughs> we get new business. That could be all another the time. nonprofit. <laughs> Yeah, we can empower people with that. Um, uh, Long Island Cares, um, you know, like I said, I did quite a bit of um, networking out in the community. And Long Island Cares, of course, is a great organization here on Long Island that helps with food hunger, uh, food insecurity. And, um, you know, we wrote them a letter and asked if they were interested in, uh, you know, learning about our feast program and if they would maybe uh, like to partner with us. Um, So we... They, they loved the program. They thought it was great. And uh, we actually did our first program at the Long Island Cares uh, new facility. Uh, they're a community engagement center in Hop Hog. And Mary Ellen taught that class in September. Um, we only started this program really in uh, September of last year. So it's quite new to us. So uh, we had a pilot at their uh, facility it worked out wonderful. We, we ran it for eight weeks and they also helped us with food where we were able to give our uh, students food, additional food besides what we gave them for the ingredients. So it worked out nice. It was in person and we, we worked out the kinks for the, for you know, what works and what doesn't work for the uh, program. But what happened after that is that we had this uh, COVID, uh, the numbers started spiking again in the new year and uh so we decided we'd have to halt on uh having our classes over in person and to really start it online so that's why we had to create the online uh program but we are still uh partners with long island cares and we're going to uh hopefully in the new year and we are in the new year in april uh start in-person classes again uh we hope to have it in Hop Park and also at our location in Patchogue. Now, I saw um, that you have a, a community garden in Patchogue. What's that all about? Oh, yeah. We started a community garden uh, last year in April. Um, it was really something just to get out to the community. Uh, we had, you know, you know, a lot with the COVID uh, and a lot of things were uh, on uh you know, on hold. So we started to work with the Patchogue Community Garden. Uh, they have a wonderful uh, plot, you know, big uh, garden in Patchogue. And we got a couple of plots there they gave us. And we uh, started a community garden where we uh, gave the food that we grew to the local food pantries. And that bring people together because people really wanted just to get out of the house um, and really help in the community. And this was just a wonderful way of doing that. Um, and we're going to continue on now with the community garden. We're going to continue uh, uh, growing food and giving it to the uh, local food banks or use it, and also using it with our program, the Feast program. So um, that's how that started, just out of uh, people wanting to do something in the community, and that was presented to us. So we now, decided to start. We saw on your Facebook page that you sometimes offer free yoga classes online. <laughs> Now, how does that tie in with the uh, Harmony Cafe and uh, how does it actually work? What's it all about? Um, We started that. uh, Mary Ellen runs that also. She's a great help to our our organization. Um, We started that just this year uh, online along with our feast program. So Mary Ellen could tell you about that. She teaches it. Yeah. So I'm a certified yoga instructor as well. So before this has always been like a passion of mine to tie in nutrition 
and um, exercise, um, you know, a little meditation, all of the things that really can incorporate wellness. So the half hour before we start our feast program, we have a half hour yoga class, um, which we're obviously we're doing um, online. And it's a little challenging that way. And it's just basic um, beginning yoga. But I think it also helps set people up to um, be more focused for the, the, our feast program, which is right after it. Um, just moving the body a little bit is also very helpful. So we're trying I think it's really important to try and incorporate that piece of it too. movement, a little bit of meditation, breath work, um, and then, you know, talk about the nutrition education. So I think all of these things go together to really incorporate what wellness is. It's not just um, eating healthy foods and, and movement, but it's also the mental piece of it too, which we've all had a lot of stress with over the last few years with COVID. So bringing that all together, I think is really, really important. Melon Rose, um, we, I think we all would like to help out as much as we can. And we think of helping it first with donations then perhaps volunteering time. Uh, I see that you actually are looking for Fitbit watches and uh, if people are donating those or are there any other things that we wouldn't think of for an organization like yours that could be helpful or we might even have it around the house? Um, we could always use shopping bags uh, because we do give out quite a bit of food to our feast program uh, students. So we're always looking for shopping bags to pack up the food so people can donate that. We always could use uh, Ziploc bags. We were always purchasing those. Um, you know, if they had that around the house, um, you could always use that type of things. Um, Where did the Fitbit watches come in? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Fitbit, right. Um, yeah, when we first started this program, we actually got Fitbit uh, watches donated from a Boston, uh, Boston nonprofit. I, I saw it online and they were giving them out, but it was more like a one-time thing that they gave you a set. Like, it was like 30 they donated to us. So I thought that why don't we just do that ourselves? And I uh, put up a post. We put up a couple of posts for people to donate their uh, used. Uh, as long as they work, uh, we refurbish them to give them to our feast students. So if people have old watches or ones that they just don't use or they're getting the latest model, they can donate them to us. And um, they can send it to our, um, our office or uh, our P.O. box. If they want to go on our website, they can get all that information on our website. And again, I'm just going to tell our audience if they didn't get it before and tell me if I'm correct, harmonycafeli.org. Correct. Okay. That's it. That's harmonycafeli.org. If you want to help out in some way, or even if you have a question, maybe there's something you have that you could donate and you're not sure if they would be helpful find out, get on the website, and uh, get to talk to the ladies. I want to thank our guest today, Rosemarie McCarthy, the founder and president of the Harmony Cafe, and Mary Ellen Grimes, who is their advisory board member and their feast program instructor. Thanks so much for being with us today. All right. Thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate it. I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Mike DeMarco. We thank you for listening to this week's special edition of My Hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown.